There seems to be a new wave of sidepod design that more and more teams have adopted in 2019, that in 2020, just about Alfa Romeo and Haas being the only team left not adopting it. And that is these top side pods that is shaped downwards towards the floor. They are first seen, used by Red Bull Racing and CDC AMG in 2017. Before this, side pods tend to be more slender from front to closing off at the back without a shape that goes down towards the floor. To figure out why these new designs are being used, maybe we should start off with the frontal side pod approach area. As here may lie the reason why the rest of these side pod designs are the way they are. We begin with why they are raising the intake cooling and leaving a lot of flow area below it. This most likely has to do with aerodynamic downforce and we will get to that later. Before, the area usually had an intake that covers most of the front area of the side pod or shaped to bring more air mass towards the rear diffuser. But in recent years, they raised the intake upwards towards the top of the side pod, giving the space below it an approach angle to force more air outwards. And this influenced the upper floor area airflow towards the outer floor, pushing more air outwards. This effectively gets the front to mid lower area of the side pods to work with or complement what the barge pods are already doing, which is pushing air wide and to create a wake or outwash that would draft air outwards and affect the underflow ground effect. This would increase airflow velocity underneath, resulting in even more downforce. It also creates a gap between itself and the front floor area to draw more air from the floor away from the underfloor to get more ground effect. We can observe here an edited front aero element to expose the side pod of last year's Ferrari SF90. This makes it obvious that the front approach angle of the side pod is aggressively forcing air outwards. It also tells us its reasoning behind its design of raising the cooling intake. As we look at Mercedes AMG's side pod, its approach angle, it is obvious that they are using a lot of wing elements and fins to encourage downstream. It also looks to aim towards this mid lower area of the side pod, making it a vital area in today's Formula One ground effect plan. Unlike this year's car, the W11, last year's W10 saw a lot of aero elements forcing air downwards. Maybe this is because last year they were not aggressive with the raised side pod intake and instead chose this route. This year, however, they raised the intake aggressively to the very top of the side pod and cleaned up the area in front of the side pod. One would think that Racing Point can choose this route as well with their new car. At Suzuka Senior, the top shroud, which was before one piece, now made to split. Most probably to encourage even more downstream to assist the element below it. With it closed, there might be a slight venturi effect, slowing down airflow instead. In this area, most teams have already opened up their shroud. The arrow elements here can be seen pointing towards that toolbox, which probably is a sign of their targeted intent. Yeah? This would be the area that they would continuously try to push air outwards along the edge of the floor. Another part of moving as much air outwards is the raised frontal side floor where there are aggressive aero elements that look to generate a lot of vortex under the floor towards a raised kink at the side of the floor. This seem to work directly underneath the floor to influence as much air to go outwards. Just think of how effective this would be with downforce increasing, ground clearance reducing and the whole floor drops closer and closer to the ground contributing to even more ground effect and downforce. Ironically though, it seems that this year's Mercedes AMG has minimized their version of this. Here is the SF90's version and then the Red Bull Racing. So now we have some idea of what is going on with these front side pods. Because air is being pushed wide, what is going to fill the void behind it? The side pod that encourages downstream is probably designed around this. 
If there is no shape that would encourage air to go wide, its outwash or wake force towards the outer floor edge would be limited. The outwash should be more effective if there is a filler behind it or something to follow up the air that is going outwards. The wider, the more ground effect can be had. Let's look at the lower portion of the side pod and looking at these three arrow elements pointing outwards towards the raised kink we can get some idea of where the outflow is heading and that is uh, aggressively away from the floor and upwards to influence as much air out from under. The raised kink would give the outflow of air access to influence the underflow air away from the floor. This would also follow up on what the barge boards are already doing to make it more effective. The mid height of the side pod will act as a filler behind the former's outflow of air, presumably to create a vortex that would influence even more air away from the floor. This vortex can act like some sort of air curtain side skirt. Now the vertically raised side blades can fill air behind this area, making certain that air is continuously fed towards this continuation. That's why there are also fins that are pointing downwards. Here is where the drop behind the side pods come into play as it fills any void by the outflow of air again to assist in filling gaps left by the forces of outflow of air in front of the side pod. The green arrow that comes from this downdraft shape shows how it could encourage airflow to go even wider so the coke bottle closure towards the rear of the side pod won't interfere with the flow outwards airflow. Here we look at Red Bull Racing's Shanghai car. What's interesting about this picture is how Red Bull Racing shaped the front side pod approach angle, having its opening angle extended further backwards, most probably to increase coverage of the outflow of air towards the outer floor. Red Bull's Shanghai car is without those outward blades that Mercedes AMG has, but at Suzuka they added four of them and this is their 2020 car a continuation of that. The angle is aggressively pointing outwards, symbolizing the direction of air. It is also clear how important it is to follow up airflow behind the barge boards and those behind the front side pod. At Monaco, the path of aero exit under the side pod air intake is very clear here and that is outwards and seen here also is how they designed it to work with the underflow. What is also interesting is that because now teams are running positive freight floor, the frontal portion of the floor is much lower and much closer to the ground than the raised rear diffuser. This changes the paradigm of today's ground effects focal point, where once it was highly influenced by the diffuser, especially during the double diffuser period and barge pod, but now the combination of the splitter, raised front side pod with a downstream that is shipped towards the floor in grated flow has this area much more important than before. However, at high speeds, as the chassis rake is reduced, the diffuser will play a more important role in balancing high speed aerodynamics. Here we can see at speeds, the chassis rake is reduced, but it still has a positive chassis rake angle to it. With air going outwards off the top of the floor, this effectively makes the floor a primary diffuser. There was a time where the most talked about aerodynamic part of a car was the front splitter ground clearance and how much it influenced a Formula 1 car's ground effect. This definitely makes today's splitter to side pod aero approach even more important. At top speed, they are even resorting to scraping the splitter to stall it and reduce high speed drag down the straights. Seen here is last year's Red Bull Racing's RB15 and they tried to draw as much air above the splitter. From the splitter, this air would be forced all the way to the outer edges of the floor and this is assisted by the side pods. Here is the RB16 making it all the more obvious. 
Let's compare with the more classical side pod design from 2019 Scuderia Ferrari SF90 where it does not have that downstream design behind its side pod intake. Here makes it more obvious that airflow is split and its forces too are separated neutralizing each other rather than working together. Instead Ferrari looks to be using those vertically raised side blades to guide air behind the outflow of air as a filler. The vertical blades above the upper flow area grating too look to be at a much more shallow angle than those with the downstream side pod design. And this means last year's SF90 did not generate as much outflow as those that did use the downstream side pod designs. The white lines that follow the coke bottle shape of the side pods look counterproductive on floor, outflow edge stream. Here we can see a computer fluid dynamics having air behind slightly drawn in by the side pods after they have been forced outwards. This is from the classical closing shape of the side pods, not encouraging backing up the outflow of air that is happening at the front of the side pods. Instead, those side pods are encouraging that airflow return inwards. And this might have an effect on the ground effect that is happening under the floor. On the Williams, it is very obvious the side pod aerodynamic design, which actually is very up to date most likely influenced by Paddy Lowe, who came from Mercedes AMG. This flow viz shows how much air from the top ends up on the floor. The output forces may be leaving a void that forces air from the top to be drawn in downwards, making the downstream type side pod a natural choice. Just look at how aggressive this season's W11 side pods are in influencing air outwards and drawing air from the top of the side pod downwards towards the floor. This is as if they design this as if it's an extension of the barge boards.